Hello and welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Corey and I love flipping furniture and creating home decor out of ugly things or old antique things or just random things I find at the thrift store. Today I'm going to be working on three projects which is an antique chair and then I have a vintage wicker set and I'm also going to be doing a faux oil painting out of a printed picture that I got from an estate sale. Everything I bought here was from estate sales. I've been going to a lot of estate sales lately. We also had a little bit of a disaster strike. We had a big storm come through and it ended up causing some water damage because we had a small leak in our roof and then water was also getting in through the brick in our house. But that's all right because I made three beautiful projects for you in the middle of all that. The very first project that I'm going to be working on is this antique chair. The decor style that I typically do is very traditional. This chair is like the epitome of traditional decor. I'm also into some coastal stuff and like Grand Millennial if you've heard of that. But I typically like traditional things. I like antique things. I like cottage style things. And this chair had wonderful bones. If I wanted it to be yellow, I totally would have kept the seat because it was in excellent condition. Even the underneath side looked like it was new, even though who even knows how old this thing is. It's definitely at least 70 years old, I would think. But I quickly found out why I got such a good deal on it. I only paid about 5 to $10 for it at an estate sale. And when I got it home, I found out that this corner was broken, which is okay. I'm totally fine with that because little do they know, this is an easy fix. All I had to do was put a little bit of wood glue in there and clamp it down and wait a day for everything to set. I swear clamps are one thing that you will need if you are trying to flip furniture. There will come a time when you are flipping furniture or just in home ownership, like owning furniture and owning a home or anything that you own that has wood at all, you're going to need to have some clamps. I'm going to link some in my Amazon store for you guys just because it's one of those things where everybody says, well, what will I need to do DIY stuff? clamps and I swear you can never have enough of them either. So like I mentioned in the beginning we did have a roof leak and it was a small leak coming from the corner and then I thought it was leaking down the wall and getting onto the floor here. Um, I noticed that my curtain had a water stain on it one day and I thought oh did my dog pee on there and then I realized there was a water stain on all of the floor baseboards there and then I pulled it back and found a little bit of mildew starting to form back there and so I pulled out an air purifier. This air purifier comes from Membrane Solutions. They sent me two of these HEPA air filters and my other one I'm going to put in my bedroom. I have really horrible allergies and like even if you just look at me wrong, I will get a sore throat. So I wanted to see if maybe it was something that an air purifier could help me out with in my home, especially in the area where I paint. It has a 3-in-1 HEPA filter in it, which is a pre-filter, an H13 True HEPA, and an activated carbon filter, which can capture particles as small as 0.3 microns, including like allergens, like pet hair, dander, VOC, viruses, bacteria, and I ran them for three weeks and wait until you see what is in these filters. I'll show you later at the end of the video, but I'm starting to think maybe I'm allergic to my dog because wow, there was a lot. And she hardly sheds. But back to the project. Once everything was dried and cured, I took the chair with me to Hobby Lobby while my roof was getting repaired and I shopped around all the different fabrics. I am the type of person who tends to like everything and so it's really hard for me to find something that I love because I like everything. So I thought that this time instead of picking something that I really like in the store and getting home and seeing that it's not exactly what I want for the chair, I brought the chair with me. <laughs> I'm sure everybody thought I was crazy, especially how I had to hold it <laughs> in order to get through the store. But I thought it was really important for me to do that because I wanted to see the fabrics there with the chair. So I actually recommend doing this. Here are some of the fabrics that I was looking at with the chair. There were quite a few that I really loved. I'll show you which one I picked in a little while. But once I got back home, I decided that I wanted the cushion to be a little bit fluffier. It was really flat and that was just originally how it was made. So I added one inch of foam and I have uh, quite a few little helpers around me as you'll see in the video. But I added foam that I got from Walmart. They just sell it in a roll. It's one inch thick. I added that to the chair by just tracing it out and cutting out the shape with some scissors. I know that you can cut foam better with using like a bread knife or one of those electric turkey cutters or turkey carvers 
fingers, but I don't have that, and I didn't want to use a bread knife on such a thin piece of, of uh, foam anyways, and I mean, it's a quick project here, guys. We don't have to overthink it, <laughs> but over top of the foam, you're going to use quilt batting, and you can get the cheapest quilt batting you can find. It does not matter. The kids approve <laughs> and i staple that on as if i'm stapling on fabric it's going to help to smooth out any lines from the foam as well as hold the foam in place while you're putting on the fabric and all you're going to need is a staple gun for this i have an electric one it's a milwaukee one i think i have one that is in my Amazon store for you guys, but you can get them from Home Depot as well. And another thing that I wanna mention is I sprayed disinfectant on all of my chairs before upholstering them, and I personally enjoy using the Microband brand, but Lysol works just as well. You saw the fabric that I chose here. It is a beautiful medium dark blue. I thought that all these awesome, cool patterns that I saw in the store were just too busy because of the carving on the back of the chair. Look at how that turned out. It's classic, it's simple, and it's gonna look really beautiful and let the chair's wood stand out by itself. But I wanna show you guys some happy mail that I got from one of my viewers, and I believe her uh, YouTube name is uh, Angels Abstract Art. She sent me this really pretty French country style fabric. And I thank you so much for that. I really appreciated it. And I wanted to show it off as soon as I could in the first video that I'm getting out since I got the package. So I'm using it as like a peekaboo underneath the chair until I find another project that I can use it on a larger scale. But I just wanted to thank you so much for sending that to me. I am not a seamstress by any means and I'm not a professional upholsterer, but man, do I love recovering chair seats. <laughs> now I will show you the process of removing the clamps. It's just very simple. I double checked that there wasn't any drips of glue before I did put the seat back on. And when I saw the seat on, I thought it was a little bit too plain for me personally. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I love adding faux nail head trim to pieces. So I wanted to add some faux nail head trim. I prefer silver over gold, but they do make this in gold. I have only ever found it at Walmart and Joann's, although Joann's is way more expensive for this, like double the price than what Walmart sells it for. So try and get it at Walmart if you can. It's in the ribbon aisle. I'm just using a hot glue that is for fabric to attach it on here. If this is a really high traffic chair that's going to be sat on over and over again all day long every day, I don't know if I would recommend adding it in this instance just because it's going to get worn really easily and the, even though it's fabric glue, it's, it's not going to stand the test of time if it's being used a whole lot. But this is more of a decorative chair for me. Here it is all finished. The focal point of the back of the chair is so gorgeous. Craftsmanship like that does not exist anymore and it deserved to be shown off by having a simple fabric on the seat. I am so proud of this $5 estate sale flip and it is currently in my bedroom and I'll show you that later when I do my bedroom makeover. The next project is another traditional furniture makeover with a little bit of a cottage twist. I got this at an estate sale as well. I'm sure I paid less than $20 for it. I think it was more around $10 to $15. And it also came with a mirror that I will show you later. But it had some chips in it. It just was kind of dirty, just a little bit dingy. It needed a little updating. And I thought that I could redo it in white, but then I thought, what if I made it look more like a basket? So I picked the color khaki and I got this spray paint from Lowe's. It was actually on clearance and I found out later it was because they discontinued this color and I went to use this color again on something else and ran out and had to <laughs> scramble to figure out a solution because they didn't make this color anymore. But I found out that I think Ace Hardware has a store brand, like Ace brand version of this spray paint in khaki. Make sure you're getting the enamel spray paint when you're doing spray painting projects, um, especially for furniture, because it's going to get a lot of wear and tear. So you want a paint that's going to stand the test of time, and enamel paints are extremely durable because they're enamel. I think of enamel wear. That stuff lasts forever. So you want your furniture to last just as much as anything else in your home. So when you're spray painting wicker, um, I love using enamel paint. I will try and find 
this paint on Amazon because I did see that they had some on Amazon. I just couldn't wait to get this video out so I went to Ace and found that other version but I'm pretty sure they do still have some on Amazon if you guys want to use this exact color. It was a beautiful color for this wicker. Gave it more of a basket look, more of a cottagey look instead of like a beachy look or a shabby chic look. For the mirror, I didn't tape it off because mirrors are very easy to clean paint off of. All you need is a flat razor blade and it comes off like butter. The final result was gorgeous, especially against a bright white wall and that muted blue and the blue and whites. Oh, it was just stunning. I wish that I had a place for this in my house that worked better. Unfortunately, the spot that I wanted to put it in, it just ended up being kind of in the way and it made it more difficult to clean my kitchen floors with it being in the way and whatnot. So I did end up selling this piece. I only sold it for what it cost me to make it over. Um, I've been looking really hard to find the same kind of charities like I was involved with in Arizona since we moved to Texas. And it's been surprisingly hard to find somebody who wants to work with me and allow me to give them all of my projects for these kids aging out of foster care. But I'm still waiting for some responses, so I'll let you know whenever they finally get back with me on that, if I can start working with them again. But three weeks have passed. It's time to see exactly what this has collected. We also had our carpets cleaned in this amount of time, so I wasn't really expecting a whole lot in here. This is kind of what I expected it to look like, just a little bit of dust here and there. But my bedroom one, wow, I'm embarrassed to even show this to you guys. Uh, my dog sleeps right next to this. And look at all that. I can only imagine it's got to be dog dander, right? What else could it be? I mean, I vacuum all the time. It's my bedroom. Like all we do is sleep in there and get dressed. So what in the world? It's no wonder my allergies have been so bad, but they're going to give you guys a 30% off discount. They usually give 15% off and then they give a 15% commission. And I said, I don't want the commission. I want people to get this because they want it. And I want them to know I authentically like it, use it. I'm not getting paid for any of this. So I asked them to give you guys my percentage in the commission, which gives you 30% off. I will have their website linked as well as the discount link down below. So if you've got some allergies or babies in the home, highly recommend this air purifier. The very last project is something I think is really cool and I could not wait to share this with you. But here is a 1947 print of Blue Bonnet Trail by Porterio. I don't, I don't know how to say that artist's name, but I got this for $3 from an estate sale as well as this frame for $5 at the same estate sale. And it was originally $33 wherever they bought it from brand new still had the cardboard on the edges beautiful solid wood constructed frame absolutely awesome piece on, and i'm going to recreate it into a faux oil painting by using some mod podge i've been seeing this all over instagram everybody is doing it right now and i wanted to try it out myself when i saw these at the estate sale i thought first of all Wow, how beautiful is this? And second of all, it's going to go with my home decor so well. And third, it would be a perfect candidate for trying out this thing that I wanted to do. And I wanted to show you guys in case you haven't seen it before. I'm just dabbing on the Mod Podge and um, trying to kind of recreate what I think the artist brush strokes would look like on different areas. So I'm like blotting in some areas, kind of like sliding it in some other areas trying to create a texture that looks realistic for each of the elements in the painting. And it was kind of fun feeling as though I painted this beautiful painting. <laughs> no way could I do that. But in a way, it's like you're recreating it with your own hands. So you feel connected to the image that's on there because you're kind of tracing it your own self. Up close, you can see you have to be careful not to uh, blot it too fast or too crazy because little air bubbles can start to form and you don't want air bubbles because they'll dry on there and you'll be able to see them at the end if you um, allow those air bubbles to dry. So just be mindful of that part and see how the texture looks hand painted now. I went from an old piece of paper into this real looking painting. 
I let it dry and checked it out to see how the texture was looking and I ended up doing a couple coats in some areas just to give it that real heavy textured oil painting Monet style that I love so much of impressionist art. So if you want more texture, do layers. I wouldn't do like a big glops of it all at once. I would do it in layers just so that the paper doesn't get distorted or warped or God forbid you poke a hole in it if it gets too wet. <laughs> I could picture myself doing something like that, that's for sure. But the frame was protected in this cardboard edge pieces. I really wonder where they bought this frame from. Um, it, it makes me wonder if like what kind of shop they went and got it from and what they originally were going to use it for. I don't think it was originally planned to be used for this uh, print. They were in the same area of the estate sale, but I, I just don't think that's their original plan that they had for it. I wonder what they were going to put in it to, yeah, other than this. But I, may, I moved the frame all around to see uh, where exactly the image was going to fall inside there because the image itself was bigger than the frame hole dimension. So I moved it around and just checked to see how I wanted it to be. I wanted there to be less sky and more blue bonnets so I decided that the part I would cut off would be the top where the sky is. If you wanted it to be more light and airy and have more of that white and light blue then you could cut off more of the blue bonnets or whatever it is in your image if you're going to try this at home. Just pick out how, whatever part of the painting you think is the prettiest. I also cut the name of the artist out and I wanted to find a way to put it with the image usually there's like a little plaque at the bottom of a real painting and so um, when I was gluing on the image I was trying to find a way to glue that on there kind of like a plaque but it looks funny so I decided to just glue it on the back and I'm really glad I did it, it looks absolutely stunning look at this it looks like a real painting it's nice not having a glass over it because when you take pictures or just as you're passing by it glass tends to glare and this has a little bit of shine to it just because it was a glossy Mod Podge but it's gorgeous the details stand out so much better when you don't have glass on an image and I could not be happier with the results of this if you like what you saw today don't forget to hit subscribe down below so that you don't miss out on any of my future projects my next one is going to be an entire dining room makeover and if you want to see more of my past videos head on over to my channel